2011. This is taken in the big studio. This is a history series, which is a series of panels describing the early stages of settlement from first contact through to about 1880. It began with a conversation with a friend of mine, Gordon Brooks, who um, is very interested in many things, who suffered two strokes but hasn't allowed it in any way to diminish his zest or his capacity or his understanding for life. And we talked about the idea, and I think that's very important with an idea like this, to be able to bounce ideas off someone. How do you show what it was like actually to be here, to arrive then? The first two are this would be about seven, uh, 1767, I think. This is first contact on Bruny Island when Cook met a group of Tasmanian Aboriginals um, and gave them a necklace, which they promptly chucked in the bushes. But what comes out in the early engraving, which is, this is based on, um, or put together from several engravings, actually, was that the first emotion, really, between the peoples when they met was curiosity. When two races meet, they're not naturally antipathetic to each other. And the dark side was something that really came later and grew up with competition over land. But the first motive, and the one I wanted to keep true to, was the freshness of it. <clears throat> How new it was for everybody. This one is leaving London. This could be Deptford with a hulk. And this is, again, drawn from an engraving, although I've added things like the like the family saying goodbye on the beach. And um, the convicts leaving in the boat, according to Watkin Tench, who was a soldier, the convicts who left were actually pretty cheerful because what they left behind was certainly no worse than what they imagined they were going to. And this is a um, convict, or just a bloke, really, someone who stole something, saying goodbye to his girlfriend on the, um, at Deadford. The third one is, deals with the crossing of the first fleet, so this would be mid-Pacific. Um, and this would be Arthur Phillip with the convicts exercising on the ship. They were allowed out to exercise. And Phillip was uh, an extraordinary man, very humane man. Uh, he was a sea captain of, of great experience and a soldier, a man of terrific courage, who, um, who uh, was also a social visionary. The um, Australia owes to Arthur Phillip the idea that no piece of land in Australia should be subdivided to less than a quarter of an acre. The point being that from that, Philip, being a farmer, realised that a family could feed themselves. That was his vision and it's been sustained. The fourth panel deals with the beginning of settlement, which is building a bark hut in the bush. You start off with the tarp, you cut down <coughs> uh, a few logs, you cover them in shingles, and it's a, it was a very hard, difficult life. They had to be extremely tough and resourceful people, and that really did build the character of the country. Um, I'm quite sure. I used the tall format because these are all story panels, and it's somehow easier to give the idea of a sequence if you have a long format. It's a, quite a tradition in, in Renaissance painting, too. This is a girl on her own. When I showed the, um, you could say, the Shearer's Bride, when I showed the first five panels to my daughters, one of them said, Dad, where are all the women? And so I introduced this panel by way of giving an idea of what it was like for a woman on her own to have to cope with everything, um, completely unaided. <clears throat> and because it bred a tremendous resourcefulness in everybody, including, of course, the women. This was a shearer. Um, again, it's a nod to 19th century painting and Tom Roberts. But uh, these shearers are not nearly as cool or as well-dressed as Tom Roberts's, who were highly paid, even as models by Tom Roberts and wore striped shirts, because they were the cream of the... Um, of the uh, employed, uh, you know, labourers, whereas uh, these, these people, you know, their life, I think, would have been a lot more basic on the whole. This would be an early settlement town. It could be Deloraine, anywhere really with a river and a bridge, although the idea is the tiers behind, and that the, the western tiers behind, and that the story ends, of course, being 
um, Australia with a game of cricket between the two generations. So that's the sequence, and eventually I, wish, I would like to extend and to make a, f a fuller and more truthful, in the sense of having a wider basis for the story, account of Tasmanian history, and it would include, of course, the dark side to our story, without which we can't really be a complete people. We have to know all these things. But the basis of it is really that um, whoever we are, we are because two races join, and that's what we have to deal with, and and that's the that's the hope, I think, for the future. <laughs>